All right, Cowboys Nation, it is that time. Get your pens, get your papers out. Let's get to this science that our guy Patrick Nosey Walker of DallasCowboys.com is about to give you. What's good, good brother? You dodging those haymakers? <laughs> You're gonna get these hands. <laughs> uh, listen, um, I'm not dodging a damn thing because <laughs> I'm not getting paid to dodge a damn thing. Let me turn you <laughs> Yeah, I'm not getting paid to dodge a damn thing, so I'm not on the field dodging a damn thing. But I tell you what, uh, yesterday, I mean, let me just say it this way. First and foremost, before we really start talking about it, is that. I mean, I've been sitting here watching these practices for almost four weeks now, and especially mm-hmm. when the pads came on and, you know, all the, the jawing that's been going on and that we love, by the way. Uh, at a certain point, we just knew that there was a great likelihood that it would spill over. And it's yeah. funny because yesterday, uh, after Mike McCarthy's official press conference, but before practice, we kind of had him out to the side talking about some things here and there. And the question was posed to him, um, how proud are you – that the team has shown a ton of chippiness, but they've been able to walk that line successfully and not let it boil over to fighting. So yeah. Mike said he kind of chuckled, and he was like, it's been wonderful unless you just jinxed it, and here we are. Here we are. <laughs> here we are. So, but you you had a tweet, though, that I think is a greater point that may have been missed amongst all the, the haymakers and jabs being thrown. And this was your tweet. You said, the Cowboys padded practice was everything I needed to see to fully grasp how ferocious both sides of the ball are in 2023, neither backing down and essentially ready to see other people, uh, you know, out there. C- kind of elaborate a bit, because this isn't the only practice, man, that, that it's been chippy or it's, it's, it's been no. back and forth. This is kind of probably your collective no. thoughts here. It is. And here's, that's basically my summation of, of training camp. Um, and for those that, have followed through the Garrett era and things of that nature, you know, a lot of questions were around, you know, is the team soft or is they, are they, you know, competitive enough? Do they have that competitive fire enough to get to the promised land and hoist that six Lombardi trophy? And then coming into this, this off season and this training camp, where were all the question marks lying? Deal. It was on the offensive side yeah. of the ball because we knew the defensive side of the ball had dogs at every uh, position and then they go out and they get another dog in like Stefan Gilmore uh, and then they get another dog in Mozzie Smith in the first round. So they already had a, a kennel full of dogs and then they went and got some more big dogs. So everyone's looking at the offense like, uh, are you going to get pushed around? Are you going to match serve? Like what's going to happen here from day one, you know, with the addition of Brandon Cooks and, uh, and just a renewed refreshed mindset of Dak Prescott and this offense with CeeDee Lamb and Gallup trying to bounce back and Tony Pollard having something to prove on the franchise tag, uh, Tyron Smith being back and being healthy and being healthy the entirety of camp. Find some wood to knock on right now. Find some wood, okay? Zach Martin being back now finally, but every single rep has been just iron on iron. The defense has not been getting away with anything that has not been immediately returned to them by the offense. And I mean in intensity, I mean in trash talking, and and I mean in uh, impact in play. So, yes, for example, a three-play set yesterday, and I I posted it as a two-play set, but there was a dead play in between. Play number one, Dak Prescott uh, pulls them off sides with the uh, the cadence. Free play, drops a dot into Michael Gallup. Touchdown. Two plays later. Before that snap, I heard Trayvon Diggs saying, not this time. Trayvon Diggs, pick six the other way. That's been going on all camp. And then as Trayvon ran past Dak, he looked at him and said something. Couldn't pick out what he said, but he said something. But that's the fire that's been building this entire camp. And that's what you want to see from your defense and your offense. You want to see that your defense is going to stand up and challenge these guys and say, hey, we want, we want you to give us your best because you, if you don't, we're going, to, we're going to beat your ass. And then the offense is looking back and saying, "Uh uh-huh, unless you get your ass beat. (laughs) So (laughs) that's kind of exactly what you want to see. And then you look at the timetable of it all. We're now approaching, you know, the the finality of training camp, and then it all pops off. That tells me these guys are ready for fresh meat. It's a bunch of uh, lions in a den, and they're starving 
And at a certain point, it's going to – what's going to happen is what happened yesterday. But for those that are saying, I saw a Giants fan, with, you know, funny little gif, and, uh, you know, they're looking at this this fight, these fights, and they're saying, oh, this is great. No, you – that's the opposite of how you should feel. Because <laughs> if it's like this between brothers, just imagine what's going to happen week one when they go to visit the New York Giants. All of that stuff starts pouring out. That's why I love what J. Ron Kerr said yes. when he said we're not – we're not taking any blank from any of the 32 teams. And then you pause for a second and was like, wait, you said 32. And then he looked back at us and he was like, all 32. We're not taking it from our own offense. We're not taking it from any other offense in the league. And come September 10th, every, other oppo- every opponent has to get what we just gave our own offense. Bada boom, bada bang, let's play some ball. I noticed that too, Pat. He said 32 teams. I'm like, I don't think that's He a typo. said 32. Yeah. No, it was not a typo. He said it on purpose and repeated it. So I know I saw some people in the, the pro football um, pro football thread of that article, uh, that aggregation saying, oh, well, it's only 32. It's only 31 other teams. His math is messed up. No, you're missing what he's saying. Mm-hmm. He's saying that the Cowboys defense is not taking blank from anyone, including his own offense. It's about to get so, scared. Daniel Jones, <laughs> so Daniel Jones and and Jalen Hurts and and you know every other quarterback in the league they're coming every other wide receiver in the league they're coming but contrarily the offense feels the same way this offense and J. Ron Kerr said it as well he said the, the, the what our offense is getting from us every other offense is going to have to get what the defense is getting from uh, our offense is the same thing every other team is going to get. So these guys are really just champing at the bit, and even more so. I mean, like they're drooling to get some fresh meat, and that fresh meat comes to, uh, as early as September 10th, and then they got you know plenty of fresh meat after that. But yeah. I, I couldn't have loved it more, especially because everybody came out healthy. Hey, if, that, if Micah had hurt his hand, or someone you know, or Sam Williams was hurt in the blind side uh, hit by Tyler Bannis, if anybody came out harmed, this is a much different conversation. But hey, no one did. So let's play some football and put the pearls away. Stop clutching. Facts, facts, man. You you mentioned health, and you had a chance to catch up with uh, Jay Lou the other day, who remains on mm-hmm. the pup list. Can you tell us how he's feeling, and what's the chances of him coming off that pup list? There's a, a really good chance, as we had that conversation, he and I had the conversation, I want to say not three days ago. Now, keep in mind, uh, Jay Lou and I have had multiple conversations. I, I think I check in with him every couple of days, say, how are you feeling? How's the foot going? What's your latest uh, in your rehab? So I think it was two or three days ago at the most that we talked. Uh, he said, hey, you know, no, see, I'm doing everything. These are his words. I'm doing everything. I'm running full speed. I'm cutting. Uh, there's There are no limitations on what I can do, but I'm trying to build my stamina up and get past the, the little bit of soreness that he gets when he's put through the paces, which makes sense because he's working his body, his foot, and his, his lungs back to NFL uh, speed and NFL game speed. So he needs a little bit more time, but based on how he's describing it to me, it is a little bit more time, not a lot more time. So uh, I believe he'll be medically cleared uh, and escape the uh, pup list to start the season, which would sit him for four games. Uh, but, of course, we'll see how it plays along because there's still a little bit of time. He still has some rehab to go. Um, and then we still have some rehab to go. There's always the potential of a setback, but there have been no setbacks so far. And that means he's on a good track, a great track, actually, to be on the field for week one. But let's cross our fingers and hope it stays that way. Yeah, a player that returned yesterday that had been having a quiet camp, and maybe it's because of, you know, the injury to the shoulder, is uh, Junior Fayoko, the fourth-round pick. He looked like he got back out there yesterday, Pat, and and was getting after the bit. How did he look, and does he have a a chance to play on Saturday? I think he plays on Saturday. Um, If I'm gauging it by... Uh, the eyeball test from yesterday, I mean, he was not limited. He was participating in both individual and team drills. Uh, and for those that may or may not know, he did miss the Jacksonville Jaguars game with that shoulder injury. He didn't even suit up at all. Uh, but earlier this week, Mike McCarthy was asked about Junior uh, Fajoko's chances of playing against the Seahawks, and he said, quote, unquote, I hope so, looks like it. And then as the week goes on, you get to yesterday, and he's out there um, matching up against offensive linemen, and he was winning more often than not. Uh, You saw a couple of clips against him versus Josh Ball. First clip, the first rep, Josh Ball did win on the inside move from Fajoko. Fajoko 
did the outside recovery move, and he won on that that move, and that's why Josh Ball had to reach around and basically hold him to kind of regain leverage. But Fohoka was still able to get what would have been a QB pressure, possibly a strip on the football. So Fohoka looked good. It looked great in yesterday's practice. I really hope we see him on the field uh, on Saturday, and I don't see a reason why he wouldn't. Uh, be on the field unless today there's some type of medical designation. Maybe Britt looks at the shoulder and says, hey, uh, not quite yet. But as we have this conversation, I think he goes on Saturday. All right, Pat. So I'm going to put you to the test here because Oxnard's over, right? There, there, you got a bunch of practices that happen here. You got a preseason game under wraps. We want to know, who do you think has earned more playing time heading into Saturday to show that they can either A, be on this roster, or B, have a role on this roster? Because I think those are two different things right there. So who do you think deserved or should be getting more playing time on Saturday to do one of those two things? Because it's, it's a lot of Yeah, it's a lot of Yeah, you have so many tough decisions at so many positions. Um, I'm going to do a two-part here. Okay. So two-part. Um, let's go to offensive line first. Uh, I liked what I saw, uh, what I've been seeing lately from Matt Walesko. Uh, uh, especially one particular rep yesterday, I, I posted that on Twitter. Um, well, let's go versus Dante Fowler, and he just completely walled off Fowler, including the spin move recovery attempt. I mean, he, his his base was sound, his footwork was great, his ankle was there, his hand stayed in front, no holding, he didn't get grabby. So, I like what I see so far from well, let's go. I would like to see him get um, more playing time tomorrow, oh, well, Saturday, and I think that he will. Um, same goes for Matt Farniak. I think Matt Farniak needs some more, some more work. Awesome Richards. I mean, let's just say offensive line. Let's say young offensive line. line. Let's say young offensive line. So that's part one of the answer. Part two of the answer, um, I'm going to go past John Stevens Jr. because he better make this team and I'm going to go to defense. Uh, let me see more of, uh, you said someone who really needs to show that they're going to be on the team. Well, or that someone, they need to make someone the who who's earned more playing time Saturday. So say they played, you know, fourth quarter. Maybe we get a chance to see them in, in mm-hmm. the first or second quarter with some starters, or someone who who's earned a role. Or I guess it's it's, it's too early. But you okay. got all of Oxnard. You got one preseason game. Has anyone earned a role just quite yet, or earned more? I playing tell you time what, Saturday? Let's... Let's stick let's stick to offense then because defense I think defense is pretty set as far as who you know who is to go. I mean you could look at the linebacker uh, depth, but uh, I love what Jabril Cox and the Marvion Overshone are showing. Young safeties and stepping up big, so I think the defense is set. Um, offense, give me Malik Davis. Give me Malik Davis because Rico Dowdle for the second consecutive training camp has had the lead on Rico uh, in the battle for RB two. Um, it was only a groin injury and ultimately a hip injury that ended that for Rico. But now Rico's back. He's healthy. You know, the fumble notwithstanding. And then if you look at the fumble, it was all good going on in that fumble. Kevontae Turpin blocking that far downfield. But when you have that many guys in a phone booth on that one-yard line, eh, you know, series of unfortunate defense events. But that notwithstanding, Rico bounced back from that mentally. Um, and he averaged almost four yards per carry in fewer snaps than Malik Davis. Um, he produced more in fewer snaps than Malik Davis. Uh, he has the 44-yard return against the Jaguars. His burst was there. His vision was there. Malik, however, he had four, only four carries, but he averaged less than a yard in that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know what Malik Davis's potential is, but he's got to put it on film against the Seahawks and against the Raiders if he's to escape roster cuts. Now, of course, and I'll say this again, I believe Malik Davis has – great potential to be an impact player in this league. But Rico Dowdo, in fact, does have the lead on him. And then you talk about Deuce Vaughn and what Deuce Vaughn brings to the table. So I'm of the mindset that the Cowboys are going to look to carry three running backs. Okay, well, to my calculation right now, before this this upcoming game, that's uh, Pollard, Dowdo, and Deuce Vaughn, which means Malik Davis is right there on that practice squad. Bubble, which is where he was last year before he ended up on the practice squad. So if Malik Davis wants to really rattle the cage and have the Cowboys reconsidering the Rico Dowdle um, uh, decision, and that's not made yet, but it, that's what that's what the front runner is. He's really going to have to he's going to have to make some waves against the Seahawks and uh, and against the Raiders. Yeah, he's going to have to step it up. Now you you blew right past John Stevens. June, was it John Stevens? John, John Stevens John Jr. Stevens Jr. Better, Man, it's a John Stevens Jones. Because he Jones. better make this roster. 
<laughs> look, that's what I'm saying. But, look, make this but, but that's what I'm saying, Pat. That's what I'm saying. So he 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 better make the roster. You ain't carrying five. You ain't got you ain't got twenty no. minutes left here. No. So what you gonna do, real quick? Who is in? Who is out in that room? Oh, uh, that's gonna be a hard decision because, like you said, they're not gonna carry five tight ends. But then at the same time. We- how, what do you want the mix to be? Because, okay, you know mm-hmm. you got Jake Ferguson, um, who to me, and I said that's all offseason and people saw uh, more evidence of it against the Jazz Boys. Jake Ferguson is your starting tight end. Hey, let's, just, let's just put that to bed, Yeah, you know, at least for now. Because Schoonmaker, yes, he's your second-round pick, but he's coming back from plantar fasciitis, has to work his way back in. So I don't know that Schoonmaker will really compete for that starting role over the first half of the season, maybe not until year two. But – Schoolmakers on the roster, obviously, goes without saying, right? So that's two. I love what Peyton Hendershot brings to the table. You saw that last year. He he flashed. He's basically a receiver playing tight end, but then so is John Stevens Jr. Yeah. Difference being, uh, Peyton is has more quickness, more speed, but John Stevens Jr. has more length, bigger catch radius, more of a red zone threat. I would love those four, but I know for a fact that the team loves Sean McEwen as well. How do they figure out that equation, especially with Sean McEwen probably being the better blocker of any of them? Um, it, it's going to be very That's interesting. Awesome. But then keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that don't forget the practice squad is a thing as well. The only question is who can you who are you willing to risk to waivers mm-hmm. because you feel like they'll make it back to the practice squad. But the Cowboys have, in the past three or four years especially, done better, literally better than any other team in the league at building their practice squad full of players that they had on the roster before final roster cut down. So, yes, there are going to be some players like last year it was Malik Davis and everyone, including myself, was like, no, you, you can't risk Malik Davis. You just you can't. You can't. And then they waved him. He cleared and he was on the practice squad. So is John Stevens Jr. Uh, another situation that mirrors what Malik Davis was last year? Possibly. Could Peyton Hendershot be a guy that – that happens too. I think it's less likely because he does actual NFL uh, film and he has positive plays on NFL film. So uh, it'll come down to the wire when it comes to that. But talk to Lunda, uh, Lunda Wells, tight ends coach on yesterday, and I asked him, and he was like, I, I want to keep him up. Of course you do. Those are your guys. But it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's never going to be easy, man. Uh, science it's usually ain't easy, be. though. It's usually not easy. It's usually tough. It, it, it's not. That's why you got to put the work in, baby. Exactly, brother. Hey, appreciate you for coming through. I know you got some other obligations. Uh, we'll chat with you next week, Pat. But as always, man, fantastic stuff, brother. Much love from us uh, at Cowboys Nation. One love, fellas. Talk to you later. Salute. That is Patrick. No Seawalk coming through. Every, every week. Coming through for our chat. On the scientific method, man. A lot of good stuff right there. I, I, honestly, I can't wait till we're done with Oxnard. That way we can get uh, Pat in here full time. When I say full time, I mean longer, right? We get Pat longer and talk to him more about what he's seeing, you know, at practice. Because once the season starts, you know, there, there will be times where it's only media uh, availability. You know, we can't really get access to that. And then obviously just the inside stuff that he's hearing and seeing and who he's speaking with. It is going to be extremely valuable once we get to the season. I promise y'all. I promise y'all. So y'all make sure y'all stay locked for that. Thanks for watching and make sure to follow and subscribe to A to Z Dallas so you don't miss an episode of The Scientific Method every Thursday morning, 9 a.m. Central on Facebook and YouTube with every episode available on A to Z Sports.com.